At home in Scandinavia, politics and religion were closely linked, and kings and rulers used both coercion, violence and reward to introduce Christianity. Our grasp on the original etymology is tenuous at best, and Viking was barely even used to label the people who went out to sea. The Europeans on the receiving end of these spontaneous blade-wielding visitors called them Northmen, Danes, Rus, or simply those jerks who trashed our monastery. And the Scandinavians behind this violent tourism didn't really tell us what they called themselves, because our first good records from them don't show up until centuries later. But history is 20% iffy nomenclature by mass, and the name has since stuck. Still though, even our modern Modern usage is problematic, because the term often gets applied as a catch-all for medieval Scandinavia when its meaning is rather narrow. Viking is the act and associated profession of raiding. Just being a pirate. Vikings themselves were a small subset of Scandinavians, but their historical impact and overwhelming cool factor earned them top billing in medieval history. So although Scandinavian does not by default equal Viking, we can describe their collective ventures under the banner of the Viking. For leisure, Viking men and women played a game called Nefetafel. Nefetafel was a Germanic strategy game, not unlike chess, that is believed to have evolved from an earlier Roman game. They also enjoyed regular chess. The British Museum has a famous 12th century Norwegian chess set known as the Lewis Chessmen, consisting of pieces carved from walrus ivory and whale teeth. It is one of the few nearly complete medieval chess sets known to exist today. Nefetafel is so much part of Viking culture and history, it often appeared in Norse sagas, being played by heroes and kings. For example, the saga of King Olaf the Saint. This poem tells the tale of a match between two real historical figures, Nut the Great, who was king of England, Norway, and Denmark, and one of his nobles, a man named Ulf. Vikings were not illiterate. In fact, they could write using a runic alphabet called Fathark. Known to be used by both men and women, Fathark was made up of 24 letters and could be used to write out several Germanic languages. Interestingly, Fathark runes have been found carved into stones throughout Northern Europe. Archaeologists believe this practice may have had mystical...